Hello, thanks for tuning in to the Light Church at Home. I'm so glad that you tuned in wherever you are. And listen, it's the week after Easter, and I'm gonna be starting a new series entitled Walking by Faith and talking about what that means. I believe we're living in a time right now where we need to demonstrate faith, where we need our faith to grow. I'm believing, like I hope that you are, that we're gonna be out of this uh, lock-in soon, that we'll be back in the church building here in just a couple few weeks, whenever that is. But in the meantime, we're gonna talk about faith, and I believe we're going to grow in our faith. We're going to talk about what faith is, uh, how we grow in our faith, and how we can live and demonstrate our faith. So thanks for tuning in today. I believe you're going to be blessed, and I believe we're all going to increase in our faith through this series. So God bless you, and sit back. Hey, also follow along with the discussion questions and the, the follow along notes on the webpage. But thanks for joining Church at Home at the Light. You're going to be blessed. Hello and thanks for joining the Light Church at Home. We're so glad you tuned in today to join us wherever you are. But you know, Steve, I've got Pastor Steve here with me from the Light, our executive pastor over ministries. And uh, you know, we've been talking about faith and here we are a week after Easter and we're still in this COVID-19 crisis and, and shutdown or lock in, if you will, and kind of restricted in what we can do. And I hope we're not in this too much longer, but you know, what a great time to talk about faith and, and how we walk by faith, Steve. Uh, you know, we're, we're gonna be talking about what it means to walk by faith and examples of faith. And uh, you know, people see us, how we're reacting and responding. So what a great time to be talking about faith, Steve. I, I'm super excited that we're doing this. and. And like we, you and I were talking earlier, uh, people are looking for hope. Yeah. They, they need to see faith in the church. They need to see it in the Absolutely. body of Christ and see us being faithful and, and putting our faith in Him. And so I'm excited about today. It's one of my favorite things to teach on because it's literally interwoven into every Absolutely. part of our lives. And so yeah. I'm excited. Well, good. And you know, uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have a discussion. Yeah. I mean, uh, Steve and I were talking about this as we were preparing and we were getting excited about <laughs> some things. So man, I hope you get excited, but we're just gonna talk about faith and what it means. And, and we'll continue this for the next uh, couple of weeks at least. But uh, let me pray for you and we'll jump in and get started. Father, we thank you so much for your truth, for your word. We thank you for this time right here. And Father, I pray that everyone listening uh, to this uh, discussion today, this topic of faith will increase in their faith, Father. I pray that Steve and I, as we discuss it, as we have been, that our faith continues to increase. So Father, we thank you that we can walk by faith and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, you know, Steve, when we talk about this in 2 Corinthians 5, 7 is a familiar uh, passage, I believe, to many of us. And it says, for we walk by faith and not sight. And so, Steve, when I, when I say that and I think about that, matter of fact, that's our first discussion point today is walking by faith. But what does that mean, Steve? And what do you think a lot of people think of when they hear walk by faith? Uh, I think like, like you and I were talking earlier, some people literally probably it overwhelms them a little mm -hmm. bit. And then, but also the, the, the faith word gets thrown around a lot with salvation and, mm -hmm. and that, but I, I think, so whenever I hear walk by faith, that, that word walk means everything I do, every right. step I take yeah. needs to be in faith. And so then that intertwines- Or live by faith. Yeah. Intertwines everything I should then do um, or as I am doing. And you know, do I trust that who God is? Do I trust that Jesus is the one I put my salvation in? Have I trusted my salvation to right. Him? Is He the God of peace? All these things. Um, I, the, the Lord shared with me a vision a long time ago of going to the store, you know, like the hardware store. Like we go right, in, yeah. we, we need a part, we need a bolt. Yeah, I do that. And uh, the guy asked, you know, can I help you? What do you need? Well, I need this. Oh, well, that's aisle 10. Yeah. Okay, so then we go to aisle 10 and we start looking for what we need. So I had this vision of all these people coming to this store and they all had different needs. Mm -hmm. And they were looking, they were looking on the shelves and they were picking up boxes, but on every box it said Jesus. Yeah. So no matter what they needed, Jesus that's was good. what they needed. So if I'm walking through a time where I need peace, Jesus is the answer. Oh, if good, I need yeah. provision, Jesus is the answer. So as I walk out every step of my life, 
he is my answer. He is my faith. Absolutely. So. I, I love the way Steve puts that because it's, uh, salvation is a matter of faith, but that's not where our faith ends. No, it's it uh, it's kind of like our entry level, if you will, into a relationship with God, right. having faith in him. But faith means so much more. As you said, Steve, it's about our uh, having grace, peace, provision, uh, health, direction for our life, everything that we do. And, and Steve, you and I were talking about this, and even in our personal lives, uh, faith is involved in even parenting, and you were sharing something about that. <laughs> um, it, it, it is, you know, um, as, as I started preparing a message a while back, um, the Lord was speaking to me first. Probably happens to you yeah, too. Absolutely. You know, preaching the, to me. Yeah, the, the, as I prepared the message, it was for me first. And then, but He was showing me an area where I, I trust Him with my finances and, and I consider myself pretty faithful. Mm -hmm. But He showed me an area, plain and simple, that I was just blind that I wasn't trusting Him yeah. with. And, the, and that's the, the, I'm a relatively new parent. Eli's six years old and, yeah. and we got three of them now. And, and so as I go about this, I remember when I was a kid, I'd be. 10 blocks away for hours yeah. and, and riding my bike and back in the day back in the day yeah um, but if if Eli or Bella even get out of my sight I start I start getting anxious and yeah. where are they Fear what's going come, on yeah. and even to the point that it, it sometimes ruins a trip like we took the whole family down to NASA and mm -hmm. pretty cool thing to go check out and all this stuff but Quite frankly, I didn't have that good a time because yeah. it was super crowded and there was people everywhere and I was constantly, do you got eyes on Eli? Where's Bella? Mm -hmm. I was you know, afraid someone grabbed him. And, yep. and, and so he showed me where I wasn't trusting him with them. And in his word, he says he'll protect them. Mm -hmm. And so he's like, do you trust me? That's and, good. And and, you know, when you think about that, it doesn't mean that as a parent, we don't care. Exactly. We In everything <laughs> that we do, we need to be diligent and do our part. But there comes a point where we cast the care of it onto him and trust him in it. So, so faith and walking by faith involves all as aspects of our life. And one of the things I, I think about when I think of faith is, is that it's not living by our natural senses. My, my natural seeing or hearing or my, my human reasoning or understanding, it, it's walking by uh, things we can't see, trusting in God. And, you know, I, I think of a, a passage in Scripture where Elisha was surrounded by the Syrians and his servant came in and said, hey, Elisha, we're surrounded. And Elisha prays for God to open the eyes of his servant that he could see that there was more with them than with their enemy. Right. And I think that is walking by faith that we're able, it's not ignoring the things that we're facing, the challenge that we're in right now or the challenges that we may be in, but it's acknowledging that, that God is greater, right. that there is more power, there's more with us than is with our enemies. And, and, and one of the things I think about, Steve, when we think about this idea of walking by faith and, and not by sight, you know, in Romans 4, 17, it talks about uh, referring to Abraham and, and it says, God, a God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. So we have to understand that faith doesn't ignore reality. It doesn't say, it doesn't turn a blind eye and cover our ears and say, no, I refuse to believe we're in a, in a crisis or our marriage is in bad, uh, bad shape or my finances are in bad shape or we're living in this condition that we're in right now. But what it does, it, so it doesn't ignore those things, but it calls those things that aren't as if they were. Hey, God is my provider. I am in health. I, I'm going to uh, walk in his provision and his counsel. I'm going to be at peace. Right. So Steve, walking by faith is just trusting God and you know Abraham did this when he was going up to take his son Isaac and Isaac says uh, father hey I see the wood and I, <laughs> I see the, the mm -hmm. fire starter but I don't see the lamb and, and Abraham said to his son God will provide for himself a lamb and again to me that's walking by faith trusting that God is going to provide for us and you know Steve another scripture I think about when I think about walking by faith is when the disciples were fishing and th they were professional fishermen they knew what they were doing yeah they and wasn't I, I their think, first time no wasn't <laughs> their first rodeo or first fishing trip and I think sometimes that's where we fall into this human reasoning thing hey I know what I know but we have to have the ability to say you know what I'm going to walk by whatever God says no matter what right. And Jesus comes up after they were fishing for all night long and not catching anything. Right. And Jesus gives them some instructions. And I love Peter's response here, Simon Peter. And it says in Luke 5, 5, it says, But Simon, or, or Peter, Simon Peter answered and said to him, Master, we've toiled all night and caught nothing. In other words, he's kind of having a, a, a standoff here. Hey, we know what we're doing here. But look what he says here. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down my net. And you know, Steve, when I think about that, that is walking by faith. I, I know the things I know. And sometimes we can keep going down that path on the things that I know, 
but what faith it takes to go, you know what, Lord, I'm going to put all this in your hands. And if you tell me to do this, that's what I'm going to do. And we read on and see where they caught a great catch and they had to get other people to come help them, Steve. So it's so important. Nevertheless, at your word. As soon as you said that, it takes me to a place, and I know myself, I'm real good at that first part. Oh, hey, yeah. you know, I, we've been fishing all night. Um, I'm real good I at know what I'm doing. explaining yeah. where I'm at. It's a second part that sometimes we struggle yeah, with. Turn it over. But but your word, uh, when you said, uh, nevertheless, at your word, it takes me to one of my favorite passages and in, in stories in the Bible in yeah. Luke, uh, where the angel Gabriel is coming to Mary, yep. and and he's telling her that she's going to conceive and and it's going to be the Messiah. And you know, I mean, can you imagine this interchange of, oh, yeah. of in a natural going? And he's telling her, and, and she she has that back and forth with him. So right. I don't understand how can this happen. She's trying to trying to think through it. I'm not married, and everything. And he goes on to tell her the Holy Spirit. We know the story, but it's it's in Luke 1:38. Uh, says then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your oh, word. Oh yeah, powerful. And the angel departed from her, and and I think that's significant right there because he he's like, okay, that that's all I needed to know. I needed to oh, hear yeah. that. You didn't have to fully understand. You were going to trust in the word of the Lord. And, and I mean, talk about uh, trying to figure this thing out quickly in my head. How right. is this going to work? But it says, I don't need to. Absolutely. I'm going to trust in what you're saying, and I'm going to walk in that. That's amazing. That's that's a thing. And like I said, once the angel heard that, I believe he's like, okay, we're good here. <laughs> yeah, you know, Steve, I believe that was a conception moment. Right. When she was willing to say, Lord, this doesn't make sense in my head, but let it be unto me according to your word and what you say. And I believe in the same way. We can conceive or give birth to God's promises in our life by faith when we put aside what we know and go, I'm not going to live by that, but I'm going to live by faith in what he says. And I believe those are breakthroughs through conception mm -hmm. moments in our life. The, the, that's one of my biggest prayers, that that would be my heart's response. Anytime God come to me and says, "This, is, oh, yeah, I need you to do this, absolutely. that I, the first thing out of my heart would be, not unto me, but according to your word. Right. Yep. So, so. so we're talking about walking by faith, Steve, and, and what, what it means to walk by faith. But when let's talk about faith in itself. What is faith? Might be good to, I mean, yeah. <laughs> faith, when we think about that, well, I'm a man of faith, meaning I have a, a religious belief, but it's, it's a belief, it's a knowing, it's a trust, it's a confidence in something we can't see. So what is faith? And matter of fact, I want to read here in Hebrews 11, 1, it actually gives us a, a scriptural definition of what faith is. This is good. And it says this in Hebrews 11, 1, it says, now faith is, this is what faith is. It says it is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen or by, uh, or by it, the elders obtained a good testimony. In other words, that what they did, Steve, they obtained a testimony uh, by walking by faith in, in this type of faith. We're and still reading about it today. Still reading, about, yeah, faith, still reading yep. about their testimony, what they did. By faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not, were not made of the things which are invisible. Steve, we believe this, this world exists. And as a believer, we believe that God just spoke it into existence. And then why do we do that? We do it by faith because we believe. But when I think about this definition here in Hebrews about what faith is, it says it's the substance of things hoped for. And Steve, I looked that word up, substance, and, and it's a compound word. It's made up of two, uh, two uh, Greek words here, hupo and stasis, hupostasis. And it literally means this. The first word there, hupo, means to be under or underneath. Steve, like, this will get you excited here, like a foundation. Oh, that's good. That's so, good. so faith is the substance, the, the, the what's underneath us as a foundation uh, of our, what we hope for. But the second part of that says, is stasis. It means to be fixed. And it literally means to cause, to stand, or keep in place. I love that. That's oh, my goodness. What a great word for us right now where we are. Faith is, is what is underneath us that keeps us stable in this crisis, in, in whatever situation we go through and you know let me just brag a little bit on the people I've talked to Steve when I when I make phone calls or hear from people I see people standing in faith through this Amen. situation Amen. Same, I, I truly the same do yep. I truly do but it's the foundation that we stand on that gives us hope and then it talks about evidence it's it's the proof or the conviction you know Steve people are convicted based on evidence 
And, and so what is the evidence of our faith? And when I think about this as a definition, you know, what do people see? When we talk about faith as the evidence of things we can't see, I believe as we walk in faith and live it out in our life and we don't walk in fear and we walk in faith and peace and hope and all these things, that it is a testimony to people that see us. I believe that is evidence of our faith. And so we talk about that, but also, you know, there's, there's, the, it, it, there's people say, well, uh, there's faith and there's fear, Steve. Uh, and, and I think that's, that's so good. I mean, backing up just a bit, what you said there, people need to see that's how they're going to know that, that this faith is a real faith. Absolutely. Um, yeah. That when things happen, we, we don't get fearful. We don't get in a panic. We don't get all crazy and start acting in a different way right. just because some of the things around us have changed. Right. Um, but we stand on the fact that we know we've seen our God come through time yeah. and time and time again. Absolutely. Yeah, just a very simple thing. I don't worry about if the sun's coming up tomorrow. Right. He set the, the universe into motion and every day of my life the sun has yeah. come up. Just as often has he proved faithful in my everyday life and yeah. my walk. So I don't walk fearful in that. And they need to see that because, uh, you know, we... we we hear faith is the absence of, uh, or fear is the absence of faith, but it's really the lack thereof. It's yeah. faith is the, it, or fear is the absence of faith. Absence of faith, yeah. And so if I'm walking in fear, but yet over here saying I have faith, then how good is my it testimony? Yeah. yeah, how good is my testimony? So as, as he, as, as we, sorry, as we walk in this, there's a freedom. You know, Galatians 5, 1 says it was for freedom that you were set free. So I can walk freely. I cannot yeah, my job might have disappeared or, or whatever the yeah. case might have been. But if my trust and my foundation is Christ, absolutely, then I'm not, I'm not freaked out and I'm not fearful. Over yeah, it. the brook may dry up here, but God's commanded someone over here to provide for us. Steve, you were telling me about some, a saying that you have in your house on a plaque or something. Uh, yeah, what was that? We have a, we have a deal, um, a, a big frame deal. And it says, uh, peace is not the absence of conflict. Yeah. but rather the presence of God. I love that. I so, love that. you know, I mean, here's a perfect scenario of that, that, yeah. that we show our faith by walking in God's peace. Yeah. Even though there's basically chaos going on around us. Yeah, that, that's evidence right there of our faith. And, you know, one of the things we're talking about here is walking by faith and not sight. And so faith is believing in something that we can't see. But yet, Steve, faith is also uh, visible. Mm -hmm. you can, it can be seen in our attitudes, in our actions. And I believe that James speaks to this in chapter 2, verse 18. It says this, But someone will say that you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. And I think what a great time for us as a church right. to show our faith to show it in, in, the, in our, our demeanor, our attitudes, and, and just to let that faith be evident in our lives, Steve. As people are hoarding and, and, <laughs> yeah. and, and thinking, me, 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 let me get all that I can get. Yeah. But then you run into someone that's going, oh, no, man, here, let me buy your groceries. Yeah. Let me open-handed, oh, yeah. But I heard you got laid off. That's okay. Let me, let me buy your groceries. Well, what a trust. And, and so I think that's, that, that, that speaks very clearly to a faith in a, in a foundation in Christ. Absolutely, it does. And so that brings us to the third point I want to talk about, Steve, is this, is that where does faith come from? We talk about faith, that, that we want to walk by faith and what it is, but, but how do we get it? And, and I've said this before to the congregation, and I think it's true. We all want faith. And if I was to ask you, matter of fact, I'll ask you watching right now, and you can raise your hand. I won't see it, but I trust that you will. How many of you want faith? Look, Steve, all their hands are going up. Yeah, they going all up want everywhere. faith yep, out yep, there. Yep. We all say we want it. But if I was to ask the next question, uh, this, do you want a challenging situation to, to use your faith? No, we don't want that. <laughs> right, right. We don't want, we just want to have faith. But the truth of the matter is we're going to have situations in our life where we need that faith. So how do we get our faith? You know, how, where did, how do we get it? I, I, I think that's such a true statement. No, don't, don't take me out of my comfort zone. <laughs> right. I, I, I don't want to have to trust him for that. I'm good with, I'm good with what I'm doing. But, but I, I would kind of push that a little further and say that we all have faith, whether okay. you know all it right. or not. Uh, I had faith that when I sat down on this chair, yeah. it was going to hold me. We hope so. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> so. and, and, and I had, there's, there's several things that we can think of that we already have a subconscious pre-programmed faith yeah okay so so don't don't say well I don't have faith or I don't know if I can have faith because you have faith yeah 
but is your faith in Jesus that Very automatic? True. Is Very it true. that subconscious? Is it? Does it come from that same immediate place? Yeah. That's where we need to get to. Yeah, you know, we are, we learn faith, whether we know it or not. Like right. you said, you knew this chair was, because we practiced it over the years. Right. You know, we develop this understanding, gravity. We, we have faith in gravity. We don't understand it, but we have faith in it. And I was thinking about how I, when I, my kids were young, Steve, and I would tell them, maybe I was at a swimming pool or something, right, right, right. and I'd get them on the ledge and I'd say, okay, jump, jump into my arms. And initially they'd be very hesitant because they didn't know if dad could catch them or not. You know, <laughs> I don't know if I trust this guy. <laughs> but you know, after they do it once or twice, then man, they go, they're re matter of fact, they would jump when you're not looking right, at right. them because they have that kind of faith. And I thought, what an awesome thing it would be that we develop that kind of faith towards God, right. that we trust Him no matter what, that He'll catch us, He'll protect us, He'll provide for us. That's where we need to get to, you know? And, and you mentioned that we all have faith, and Romans 12, 3 says that we all have been given a measure, measure of God. faith. And I believe that's speaking to when we hear about Jesus, when we hear about God, when we hear the gospel, you, you think about uh, in scripture, people would hear about Jesus and they'd run tell other people and they would have a measure of faith to believe in him. And, and I call this our entry level faith, <laughs> that we have faith to believe in God. But we need to get to the point, Steve, where we not just have faith to believe in who he is but, uh, or, or to believe in him for our salvation, but to believe in him to catch us. Right. to catch us, to, to provide for us, to provide health for us. And I believe we, we earn or we gain this kind of faith through our experiences that we encounter with him, testimonies, and our faith grows. And, you know, there's a scripture that I love where a father comes to Jesus. He had taken his son who had uh, uh, th these seizures, this condition that he, he had had from a, a small child, from childhood, it says. Yep. And he brings, the father brings his son to the disciples and they couldn't do anything. Then he comes to Jesus and says, hey, I took my son to your disciples. They couldn't help us. Right. And he comes to him. And of course, Jesus gets on to, the, on to his disciples. But I love this story because I see myself here. Matter of fact, I think we can all see ourselves in this story. Sure. When we're talking about our faith increasing and we all have a measure of faith. I believe there's things, Steve, that I can believe for, that I, my faith is strong. But then we face some things sometimes that we're like, man, I'm just having a little trouble here. God, can you help me out? Boy, this one's a big one. <laughs> yeah. And so here in the scripture in Mark 9, 21, he, this father brings his son to Jesus. And as a matter of fact, he's having these seizures and he has a seizure right in front of Jesus. I love Jesus's attitude or his, his uh, reaction. He says, hey, how long has this been going on? He doesn't panic. Right. He doesn't freak out. But here in, in Mark 9, 21, so he asked the father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he, he is thrown into, uh, both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. In other words, it's trying to harm him. This, this demonic situation is trying to hurt my son. And he says this uh, to Jesus, but if you can do anything, and Steve, how many times have we been there? Right. Where if. we're like, man, Jesus, God, if you can do anything. He says, have compassion on us and help us. And I love Jesus' response here. He says, he says to him, if you can believe. Now, now just look what happens yeah. here. Yep. Jesus, if you can do anything. No, no, if you can <laughs> believe, I can do it for you. Right. It, it's on us to have faith. But here's what I love about this story. It, it's almost like, like God meets us in the middle somewhere. Okay, I'm going to help you out here because here's what the Father says. And Jesus says, first of all, all things are possible to him who believes. There's that faith. Yeah. But then the Father, immediately the Father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Oh man, I love this right here. Because I've been there, Steve, yep. where it's like, man, I, I do believe in you, God. I believe you. I, and I know you've done this before in my life, but I, I'm just having a little trouble here. Here, can you meet me a little bit here? And Jesus Comes does this, me. I believe, to increase his faith. You know, you, you said you said that we've all been here. When yeah. I when I when I see this this father, I see this father it doesn't tell us how old the child is, but it says right, yeah. this has been going on for a long right. time. This guy's probably exhausted and at his mm. wits' end and 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 he's like, I believe in you, but man, I need some help here. Yeah, I, I really do. So, so I, you know, you, I, I can see parents all over out there that are just kind of they're, you know, they're just exhausted, and Absolutely. they need Jesus, like you said, to meet them, to come where they're yeah. at, and and we see that just time and time again in Scripture. Yeah, I love the point you make there too, because I, I see this has been going on for a long time. I think sometimes we can start out with a strong faith, but when time goes by and we don't see progress, if you will, sure. 
then we're like, Jesus, can you help me out here? And, and I love the fact that we see he helps us and he lifts us up. But you know, so when we talk about this, faith came, I believe, uh, from this situation. He heard the word. Right. He heard the word. Yeah, you know, I mean, we we obviously weren't there, uh, right? We, so so we didn't see it. So we're literally hearing this story, this this faith building story. Jesus is telling us this story through His word, so that when we are that parent in that oh, s- yeah. scenario, when we are at our our weakest, we can go in, into His word and see a time that Jesus was faithful. Right. So that there boisters our faith. Um, yep. You know. A, 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 very popular uh, verse we all know, Romans 10, 17, says, so then faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Amen. And so the, the reason he gave us scripture and, and, and put it through forward, we can go back and see the times that he That's was good. faithful That's good. And, and we can stand on those things. So whether we're hearing it as a testimony from someone else mm-hmm. or we're, th- we're hearing it through the word of God, that hearing bolsters our faith. Absolutely. And, and you know, like Steve said, they didn't have the word. They had the they had the the law. The, they had the prophets. They had those writings, right. but they didn't have the gospels as we know it. So they would hear these stories that would be passed around, and their faith would be increased. We can build the same type of faith through reading and hearing these stories. And yep. you know, Steve, it's interesting when you talk about that. Faith comes from hearing. I believe the same is true, whether it's fear or faith. Absolutely. If we're only hearing fear, I believe then our fear is built up. Absolutely. If we're hearing things of God in faith, our faith is built up. And I've said this before, I, I watch a lot of news, but lately I've been watching a lot less news and I've been reading a lot more. I have a little bit more time on my hands lately and I've been reading more and I believe through that my faith increases. But it, when you talk about hearing, faith comes by hearing, uh, now, I'll, I'll expose myself a little bit here, Steve, but I remember years ago, that this, this, this BC, this is before Christ, right, right. before I was married, and I was out at a bar, and I was a fight broke out, and I happened to be in it, okay? And I got knocked to the ground. I, I've got a lot of BC <laughs> yeah, stories, I'm too. I'm sure we so. all do. Yeah, yeah. And I, I got knocked to the ground, and I, got, I had a scar on my chin. I had to get stitches in it, and I'm just going to tell you, my ego didn't want to tell people, hey, what happened to you? And I remember making, I, I concocted this story that I was putting air in my tire and I turned and tripped on the hose and that's how I got the scar on my chin. And I told that story so much, initially anyway, because people could see the scar and the bruise. And I remember years after that, Steve, <laughs> after, now, now this is, that was BC, but after I came to know Christ, and I remember years after that, somebody had seen the scar, and I, I have a beer now, you can't see it, but uh, somebody said, what happened to you? And I remember that story started to come out of me because I had told it so much that I even believed it myself, right. but, but I knew the truth. And all of a sudden, I, no, no, I, before it came out, I was like, I corrected it. Said, no, I, I was in a fight, you know. <laughs> but when I think about it, I think about that. We tell ourselves things so much till we believe it, right. you know. That, that reminds me of a, uh, I forget who it was, but there was some famous uh, uh, thief that they caught and, okay. and he passed like lie detector test after okay. lie detector test. And, and they kept having to let him go. And then finally they, they reveal, he, said, he says, it's not a, because the lie detector test gets your, your nervousness when right, you tell right. the lie. He says, it's not a lie if you believe it. And <laughs> it so he, it's he, still a lie. he convinced yeah. himself that what he was saying was the truth, right. although it wasn't, but he thought it was. Yeah, so the thing about it is, if faith comes by hearing, if we tell ourselves the truth and not a lie, then it's, so it's not better. a matter of brainwashing ourselves, but let's fill our ears. Let's fill our heart with the Word of God and then we will build up our faith. And you know, Paul commends the church. We're talking about where faith comes from. It comes from testimonies. It comes from hearing the Word of God. It comes from personal experiences. And Paul even commends the church for their faith and how it grows. In in 2 Thessalonians 1, 3, Steve, he says, we are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is fitting because your faith grows exceedingly. So faith grows through hearing. And I think about just personal stories and testimonies. My niece, Olivia, when she was born, uh, she wasn't developing as as what was considered normal. And she was eventually diagnosed with cerebral palsy. And I remember uh, Mark and Yvonne, my sister and brother-in-law, they're praying for her to be healed. And in the meantime, the diagnosis was there. She was going through therapy for cerebral palsy. She exhibited all the, the 
signs and symptoms of it. So it's not saying, no, she doesn't have it. Remember, it's right. not calling those things that, that are as though they didn't, but calling those things that are not as though they yeah. did. And they would continue to pray and speak healing and health over her. And she just had a birthday, 17 years old, and she is she is uh, Very uh, does not have cerebral palsy. <laughs> Matter of fact, uh, during that time when they were praying, when she was a baby, uh, uh, they had called the nurse that came over for physical therapy yeah. and they said, hey, she's pulling herself up. She's doing some normal things. And the nurse was a little uh, doubtful well, about it. it, but when she showed up, her mouth dropped oh, wow. and she couldn't believe it. And eventually she was, uh, they went back to the doctor and they said she no longer has cerebral oh, palsy. Praise the Lord. But you, yeah, <laughs> praise God. But you know, it's things like that, Steve, that build up our faith. It, it, see, and, and I love it. Thank you for sharing that, that story because that's something no one can argue away from you. Exactly. I, I mean, that, that's something that you were eyewitness to. And in, in multiple scriptures, it talks about uh, the, the disciples giving an eyewitness testimony. Right. Um, Second Peter 1 16 says, For we did not follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses to his majesty. Yeah. You know, I just love this. They didn't come in with some big production and smoke and mirrors and trying to right. just wow them off the deal. What they told them was what they saw with their own eyes and the majesty in their in their deal or what they had seen. And I think we can all share mm. the majesty that we've seen. Absolutely. God show off in our lives. Yeah, our testimonies help other people's faith. And, and that's why, like with young believers and stuff, they say, oh, I just can't share the gospel. I don't know enough scripture and this or that. And I say, don't worry about knowing all the scripture. Tell them what God has done that's for you. That's good. That's good. Um, you know, and, and so sharing Jesus in that way and then also sharing it to myself in times where I might get uncertain, mm -hmm. I go back and I just start playing all the times. He was magnificent to me. Yeah. And, and I, I give myself my own testimony. He was faithful then, he was faithful then, he was faithful then. And it literally just says, okay, then I have zero reason to doubt he's not gonna Absolutely, be faithful right yeah. now. So it's, it's literally yeah. that foundation we were talking earlier. And, and it just, again, so much excites me because it's the springboard that sends us off into our walk with faith, Absolutely. our walk with Christ. It's the thing that sustains us. It's the thing in the trust in that he's coming back and it's what's gonna bring us home. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. it's all through there. You know what you're talking about is a biblical principle because when you look at the Israelites, when they, they came out of Egypt and God said, hey, tell this to your children and them tell it to their children. It's the same thing that we need to do. Let's tell what God has done for us. Mm -hmm. And as you said, you know, faith is our springboard into our relationship with God. But it's also the thing we need to continue to build and grow in our faith, okay? So in closing, let me read this to you, Ephesians 2, 8. It says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And so uh, our salvation is the gift of God that comes through our faith. And, and I love this passage here, Romans 10, 9. It says, uh, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, there's the faith right there, yep. that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes, it's in, inside of us, right. unto righteousness. And with the mouth, there's the, the, the action of it. Uh, confession is made. Our words are evidence of our faith inside. It. So walking by faith. So, hey, again, thank you for joining us today, Steve. Thank you for being a part of this. And Thanks for having listen, me. Listen, I, I believe that your faith has been increased by hearing the word of God today. And let me do this. Let me pray for your faith to increase. And listen, maybe you're out there and, and Steve, like we're talking about, the, this springboard or this entry level of yeah, faith. Yes. Each one is given a measure of faith. I hope that if you're watching out there right now, and you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, this has given you the faith to accept Him as your Lord and Savior. So look, let me pray that you have faith and you, your faith increases. Father, I pray for everyone out here that our faith continues to increase. And Father, for that, those that may be watching right now that have never accepted Jesus Christ, Father, I pray for that measure of faith to grow in them, to be able to, to believe in their heart and accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. So listen, let me pray with you right now. If you're there and you say, Pastor Ron, would you pray with me? I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Then just follow along with this prayer right here. Say, Father God, I believe with all my heart that you exist, that God is your son, and that you sent him to die for my sins. And I take you at your word that says, if I believe that in my heart and confess it with my mouth, 
I'll be saved. Amen, amen. Well, Steve, man, thanks for joining us. Oh, Listen, goodness. and if you said that prayer, we're so glad that you said that prayer. Thanks for joining us. Listen, I believe your faith is going to increase, that you're going to walk by faith through whatever situation you have. And listen, we got some info coming up next week. We're going to talk about some examples of faith. But thank you for joining Church at Home at the Light. God bless you. Hey, Light Church, we hope you enjoyed that encouraging message. We are honored to have been able to experience Church at Home with you today. If you just prayed that prayer and accepted Jesus as your Savior, we want to come alongside you in your spiritual journey. Please text BORN AGAIN to 31996 and a member of our pastoral team will reach out to you with some next steps that are available to you. In times like these, we are so grateful for your faithful giving. Your obedience to God's Word and your heart towards generosity empowers us to support and serve our local community. If you would like to partner with us as we support those in need, you can give as you feel led at thelightcf.org. Our website also has a number of resources you can utilize during this season of online church. Here you can discover curriculum for your children, find ways to serve our community, let us know how we can be praying for you, and more. Feel free to explore all of these resources at thelightcf.org. Lastly, if you have any need during this time, let us know. We got you covered. Text COVER to 31996 to let us know how we can serve you in this season. Thank you so much for joining us today. We love you, Life Family. Have a great week.